Oh my goodness. Oh wait, I need my camera on. <laughs> oh my goodness. What is what is, okay, Bob Barker? What are we doing? What are we doing, Bubba? Say hello, hello. I remember. Oh my yeah, God. we 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 had our hair did last week. So she's like <laughs> she's like she's like crushed velvet. <laughs> Bubba, is it a squirrel? What is it? Is it a kitty? Oh, it's a kitty. Is that where we stopped? Do I need to close the door? Oh my goodness. Okay, well, you can't sit on my lap if you're going to be drama. She's like, I'm always drama. What do you mean you can't sit on my lap? <laughs> She's drama mama. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay, though. I totally get it. But what a crazy... Uh, so, okay, you leave next week. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Good, good, good. Good to know. But I'll be back two weeks. So if oh. we want to do another one of these, then yeah, we can totally do another one. I'm down. <clears throat> one of the students I had previously, her name is Nancy. She's hilarious. She's from uh, Santa Cruz area. And um, mm -hmm. she had like, she had great stories. She's like, yeah, we went through this beautiful Victorian. And she said, we just went to look at it. And she said, the kids started picking out rooms. And she said, we bought it. Like that was her experience, but yeah. And I was like, what? I've never had a student come in and say, yeah, I wasn't interested in buying a home. And then we went in a home and decided maybe that was the home. I was like, holy cow. That was, so I thought that was kind of a cool story. Anyway, she just emailed me and she's like, do you think she'll come back? I don't think I'm going to be, I'm like, yes. And it'll be recorded too. So we'll just, uh, <laughs> we'll just figure it out. But I, I wanted to come on a little bit early just to make sure I don't hit, hit at 630. I'd rather be up a little bit earlier and be able to take care of a couple things so I'm glad so two weeks yeah. that's good that's a good amount of time yeah I'll be in Switzerland for a couple days and then France and Italy as well so kind of everywhere we have family but, in Switzerland and yes um, so Switzerland's a good that's a good uh it's, it's funny because people are like, um, you should go, we should, you know, you should need, you need to come and visit. And I'm thinking, oh my gosh, do people actually go to other countries and visit because they have family that lives there? I'm like, wait, yeah, because we're in California and I always say, come and visit and we're, you know what I mean? But yeah. I don't think about it going the opposite direction. So anyway, so that's cool. Okay. Switzerland, France. I apologize. I missed the last part of that. And Italy, Italy. Oh, okay. Yeah. What's the weather like? Did What's, are you packing for warm oh. or? No, oh. it's still, well, I, hard to say. It's hard to compare because we live in freaking California. So, <laughs> <laughs> right. So like, I'm like, oh my gosh, it's free, like rainy and cloudy down here. Yeah. Um, not sure where everybody else is from, but I'm from San Diego. And so it was just rainy and overcast and just because we're closer to the ocean. So we've got the marine layer and it's always going to be super overcast until about like one or two and then it burns off and then it's like okay the sun sets and then eh. um but I think it's supposed to be raining when I'm there like on and off because Switzerland is a valley so you yeah. hit the mountain peaks and then you're in the valley and then you're out and then Italy is supposed to be warmer I think because we're going to be in uh Rome so it's going to be like kind of central okay um and then France we're going to be in Paris so that's also going to be a little bit warmer as well um but I'm more worried about Switzerland just because it is in the middle of everything and you can't really tell like it could be perfectly sunny one day and then the next day it's going to be a rainstorm wow okay so okay okay well you'll, <laughs> you'll have hey it's an adventure what's the hour uh what's the plane ride like <sighs> it's it gonna like be 10 or? hours 10 okay. hours from here to london mm -hmm. and then there's no direct flight to uh geneva where my right, aunt right. lives um so then I've got like an hour layover and okay then it's about an hour and a half two hours from London to to Geneva okay yeah it's kind of brutal so yeah, yeah no absolutely when we went to Japan it was 14 hours there and then it was 11 hours back and I was like I wonder what the difference of the three hours I'm like probably the time <laughs> not you know like the time <laughs> and because like I remember yeah. just trying to like calculate. the time zone change yeah is the time zone change. Yeah. yeah I think that was it but like I was all oh so it really isn't shorter it's just it's psychological <laughs> or whatever when but, did you um, go to Japan oh year this is pre to this is uh this was 1999 right before y2k and like it, everyone <laughs> yeah so everyone, so Adam's been multiple times because the company he works for, the 
Um, his boss is um, um, he his boss is Chinese Mexican and his wife is Japanese. Mm. And so during the um, during the pandemic, he actually moved his family to Japan. His kids went to school in Japan during the pandemic wow. and had wow. some and their business uh, because they're a live stream a virtual co a company. So they basically were live streaming um, things for like they did. Um, I think I talked to you guys about that. They did Rihanna's. Um, I, I don't know if it was the, I don't, it wasn't laundry. I think it was the cosmetic or the, or the makeup launch. And they did the virtual launch in China oh, and sick. across like multiple countries. And, the, but they made it look like it was, everybody was like in this mansion. And so they Ooh. had, so even though they didn't, so you were in one room and that room was literally China. And then one room was like New York and one room was Los Angeles wow. and different things like that. Yeah. So that was kind of a cool thing, but um, anyway, so yeah, so he's been a few times and then over uh, at, in December, his boss is like, hey, um, we wanted to do some recording and some different th stuff over the holidays. You want to um, come with us and just be in Japan for like two months. And he's all, uh, and I was like, I, I love you go and have fun. And he's like, man, if you could come, I mean, can you imagine what the schedule would be like? I would be teaching online at like, from like one in the morning to, or, you know what I mean? Like that. Right, and I was right. like, you have, you, we can, you know, we can, you know, screen <laughs> chat or whatever you want to do. Like I'm, yeah, you know, that would be an amazing experience, but he didn't do it. But um, anyway, but the, his, their company does that. They were working on right before the pandemic, they were working on, um, those video games or those games where you're in a room and the room has all the dots and stuff and you're actually paying, playing like Tetris or whatever, but you're part of the game. So you're the, the, the thing walking that, yeah. So they had some like really cool stuff like that, that they were doing. And I was like, dude, but anyway, um, yeah, but then the pandemic hit and then everybody else needed, you know, live streaming and blah, blah, blah. But hopefully they're right. going to get back to that cool stuff. Not that they, I don't mean to be rude that we're doing live streaming, but <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I don't want it to be one of those kind of situations, but anyway, so yeah, well, that's cool. I'm ex Switzerland, gorgeous, great chocolate. I know that sounds really like, you know, yeah, 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 exactly. Uh, go ahead, Brandy. I see the hand. Hi, how are you? <laughs> we're doing great. How are you doing? Good. I, I messaged the rest of the class. So we'll see Um, just to remind them that you're having this because I also re remembered. Oh, <laughs> No, I totally understand. Don't Thank you so much. Mom, you're you're welcome. Face and livable. Can't be like a slumlord, right? All right. Hanging all right. wires or whatever. Ooh, we had that conversation about rats the other day. That was pretty fun. Oh, I'm from that border Africa. Okay, see. Scorpions, uh, all kinds of oh. fun stuff. There we go. There we okay. Go. <laughs> I am. Um, I don't want to come off like I just. I'm cool with it. Like everybody has their thing. Actually, we were talking. Stacy is in the class. Stacy and I were talking last night. She asked if she could do a, a, a chat over the e-licensing thing and going through the application and stuff. And um, we were talking about like how many people come into class and literally just have it on in the background and they're like cooking or doing. I'm like, that was me, girl. That was me. <laughs> so, I'm totally. That was totally. You hi, know, Kathy. So hi, 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 Stacy. So um, anyway, but I just thought that was kind of funny. And then, but um, anyway, I, we've got like a minute left. I'm so glad you guys came. I know this is kind of one of a little bit more of an impromptu way to do class, but um, for those of you that have never done a Zoom with me, there's a ton of you that have, but for mm -hmm. those of you that have never done a Zoom with me, Elisa is a student I had last year that took the state exam last week, right? Mm -hmm. And passed the state yeah. exam. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that and was so, last week. Yeah, I'm like, <laughs> I'm all like Thank trying you. to like look, go take my check my text messages. But anyway, I just want well, I you know she you lit she literally called and was like, oh my god, <laughs> but um had said she'd be willing to come in and talk to you guys because I know that you're gonna talk to a number of people that have taken the state exam, but who do you know that's taken the exam in 2023? And to me, I, I was like, oh my God, can you come in on Thursday? So anyway, um, but take it away. Like, well, you know, if it's okay, we can start a little early. Oh, it, that's 6.30 right there. Congratulations. <laughs> Thanks, guys. I've literally been telling everybody. I walk across the street. I'm like, I thought I really sitting there. I thought I really, I literally tell everybody about it. Um, uh, girl, I'll be the same with you once I pass my exam. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. I I'll mean, be just as excited as you are. Oh, definitely <laughs> anything you do like that, it's accomplishment. Exactly. Well, um, the 
just gotta just thought I'd introduce myself. Hi, I'm Elisa. I'm Kathy's uh, student. I was Kathy's student, but I'm always learning from her. She's always teaching and always. In She's incredible. I love her. And I hope you guys love her just as much as I do. But anyways, um, I took the prerequisite courses through Cal Calibri, um, Calibri Real Estate, which is an online program. It was an intense program. I think it was three months. And each month we did each book. So principles, practice, and then law. Um, it was an accelerated course, I, I guess, I think, uh, in comparison to some of the other programs. Um, and you probably will know, or if you have already taken the first couple of classes, it's it's heavy. It's, it's a lot of learning. It's a lot of information coming at you uh, to begin with. But anything that you've learned in school, how to study, how to manage your time, uh, your habits, that's going to be super helpful. If not, there's a lot of different resources out there. Kathy has a huge Google Drive with a lot of different options and resources. If you've ever seen the Quizlets, I helped create those. Um, and so, and I, I do apologize that if you did do them and you, you noticed that I kind of dropped off, it, it really was because once you, once you've learned the first the principles and the practice, the the law, it, it all starts to make sense at that point. Everything that you learned, all these terms, all this vocabulary, now you're putting it into practice and you're having all those scenario questions. That's when you don't really need to be studying the term and the, voc uh, the, the definition and term anymore. That's when you're like, okay, how can I relay this information to a situation, to a scenario where someone who's not a professional um, it can actually understand what you're doing and what you're talking about. Um, but the experience with the prerequisites was really difficult for me, honestly. I felt like I was bombarded with a lot of information. So it was, it was a lot of discipline for me to set aside the time to practice and to study the vocabulary. But that's when the fun apps like Quizlet come in where you, you 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 can make it a game. I know that you have to pay, but I believe Kathy gave you guys all her login information for that. So um, there's there's like practice exams, there's fun matching games. You can play against your friends and see who can match the, the terms and the vocabulary faster. And um, just a lot of different fun op, uh, study tools that are out there. But um, I think, if you learn the principles and you learn the terminology and definition, you can break apart a question. So if it's if it's a scenario question and you know the key terminologies, just break down the terminology and then see what the question is asking in the end. Um, sometimes you'll have a like a five sentence uh, question, and I want to say that the scenario questions are really important. Um, as much as you want need to know the exact definition of something once it's in practice and in a scenario that's a lot of the uh questions that were on the exam for me at least as far as i understand the exam is i mean you could have hundreds of thousands of questions and they have to condense it into 150 questions so they got to hit all the main points you got to know all your main points and there could be that one or two question where you're just like it's it's you remember hearing it in class, but you might not or have recalled. Uh, but that's when like you you just gotta hopefully you can break apart the question and figure it out from there. Um, but that oh that was a lot of information. Sorry guys, I would rather you guys ask me questions so that I can <laughs> answer them and not go on a tangent. <laughs> no, that's okay. Any so you guys, I have a question. I have a question. Okay, so you just took your state down. So from what I took. From what you were just saying to everyone is that mm -hmm. the, the state questions they're based off of like scenarios of the whole entire like of us getting our license right yes i mean okay it, there there's going to be okay uh, i i remember there was one question or one scenario in principles and it just mm -hmm. felt like a really long scenario, but it was basically about encumbrances. And I, 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 it, it was just a whole story. And then finally, the end of the question was like, what is this? And you're like, oh, it's an encumbrance or whatever it is. It was, oh, it, okay. it, so it, they try to yeah. trick you kind of. They do. Got it. They literally okay. give you like four or five sentences and you think it's going to be this terminology. This you think one. it's going right. to be this definition, this and that. But then you got to really go back to the end of the question. And there's a mm -hmm. lot of those questions that are like, this is an example of 
um, a lean except, and then you if the except or the not, those negatory questions are going to catch you. They're going to get you. Okay. So those are the okay. ones that I would probably think about as well, because you need to know the definition um, and you need to know the terminology, but it, you also need to know what is not a part of that. Um, the scenario right. questions, I would say like 75% of them were scenario questions. I mean, how... I don't know how many scenario questions you get at the end of the book. I don't think there was a ton mm -hmm. from what I remember. It was a lot mm -hmm. of definition and terminology, right? So right. really going back then to read the chapter again, you know, the definition now go back to the chapter and see what scenarios came with it. Cause I think that'll help you okay. understand as well okay. how it goes into practice. Okay. Um, you know, I did want to say something. Um, your um, quizlets were very beneficial for me because um, I just, oh, I'm yay. not sure Kathy mentioned to you anything, but um, I told her those were very helpful throughout the whole course of every course, all the books I've done with her. And, and, and then again, oh, to, um, to repeat what you said about Kathy, she's an excellent instructor. I mean, I, I highly know. recommend her to be uh, the real estate All right, all right. I'll, I'll, I'm going to be paying you guys. I'm going to be paying <laughs> you to you. You know that. <laughs> You know, um, and then I'm not, I'm not sure also if you ever used it, but prep agent, I don't know if she, she mentioned to you guys prep, ed, prep agent while you were taking courses with her, but I feel those were highly beneficial um, throughout the whole three months I was with Kathy. I definitely have heard prep agent from other realtors and other agents as well. They, they thought it was probably one of the most beneficial um, tools for them. I know mm -hmm. prep agents, you have to pay for, 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 to get in, but they do have, if you have Spotify or if you have, um, I think an like iTunes, that's not a thing anymore, uh -huh. but you know, they, they, <laughs> prep agent, <laughs> prep agent has free podcasts as well. So right. on my commutes, yes. when I'm driving, mm -hmm. that's really helpful that, so I was able to utilize yes. some of the prep agent um, tools and resources. Um, but uh -huh. honestly, it's, for mm -hmm. me, it, I, mm -hmm. the, you know, that huge document, the California mm -hmm. DRE glossary, the one yes. that is from the DRE that I, uh -huh. I studied that a lot um, because okay. the definition and terminology that they're using are like word for word because it's the California DRE. Like they're going to take what they know and write what, what they, they know and what's the reason. Right. Okay. Yeah. That was super helpful. I believe I have a quizlet for that as well. There's like 700 terms in there though. So yeah. keep that in yeah. mind if you're going to go through yeah. it. <laughs> 754 and you do, and I have, and I'm giving out my password and ID for quizlets as well. So I have my prep agent password and ID. You guys can totally use that and you can totally use my quizlets too. Cause I want to give you guys as much help as I, I'm not looking to take your money. Uh, don't get me wrong. Somebody's going to take your money and I I'd rather be an encourager than a taker. Let's get you where you need to go, where your money is already invested and go from there. Um, just out of curiosity, uh, Kathy, how many of these people are doing in-person classes or the online like Calib Calib Calibri or your LACCD? Is it like a nice mix of everybody here? We, we have a good, uh, we have a good mix because the thing okay. is half of the students that are in here are doing um, LACCD or um, Los Angeles okay. Harbor College. Um, but, and then okay. the other half just finished their third class with me within the last two weeks. So okay. we have, a, we have a really good balance between that. Yeah. So that part I thought was really cool. Um, and I always, so we have just, just in case anybody, everybody that's just coming in or has been in here, they're like, this is my first time being in a zoom with Kathy or anybody. Um, we have Thursday, yeah, we have Thursday nights open for any questions students would have, and this is a free for all. So I'm either going to bring like Elisa called me and was like, oh my God, what can I do? I'm like, please, would you please, <laughs> would you please come into class? And would you please come and tell everyone? Because no matter where I instruct you, whether you do independent study or we do the live lecture, this Thursday, these Thursdays are all about what can I help you understand better? And mm -hmm. I'll, most everything, the elephant always in the room is how do I pass the state exam? And I'm like, oh man, you're on the first book. Okay, forget it. I'm throwing out the book. <laughs> Thursday night isn't about the book. Thursday night is about... Who do, who can I have come in and talk to you? And then the other question is always, I want, I need to find a broker. What broker would be a good broker for me to go through? So I basically have been leaning on students that I've had previously and ask them, mm -hmm. who is the broker that you're going with? Why do you trust them? Are you willing to bring them in? And so anyway, mm -hmm. but, um, 
so anyway, for those of you, this is your first experience with uh, in Kathy Zooms. This is really how the class is. It's very dynamic. You ask the question, we'll stay in the Zoom. If you don't ask the question, we're all going to go and have a wonderful, I don't know, dessert or maybe a little TikTok sesh or something. I don't know. But um, if does anyone else have any other questions? Any questions are open. And you can put it in chat and we'll read it. I don't want you oh, to. Oh, yeah, that, sure. Yeah, I don't want you to feel that that's a, a requirement. Well, have you, let's are, have yeah, you no, um, take the brokerage yet that you were going to be? I have with? not. Or, no, oh, okay. no, 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 not yet. Somebody goes into real estate for a lot of different reasons. I think a majority uh -huh. of people probably go in for the freedom and being able to build their own business. Personally, um, I wanted to go into real estate because I wanted to actually know what it was about. I'm interested in buying a home. I'm interested in investing. And I don't want to, mm -hmm. not that I don't trust other people, but I would, I think I have anxiety. Actually, I know I have anxiety. I have a little bit of a control <laughs> issue. Um, and so I want to be able to know that what I'm doing is actually right. And whoever the I'm right working way. with is doing exactly oh, is doing it the right way uh -huh. as well. Um, right. But I, I was telling Kathy, I have family in Arkansas. So I want oh, okay. to also look at getting my license in Arkansas. But I figured mm -hmm. that I would probably start here in California, right, yeah. my home state that I know, and mm -hmm. then move out to that way. Um, mm -hmm. But it's 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 just nice to know these sorts of things because I was talking to some homeowners and they're like I don't even know what what like people are doing I don't know what's going on in in in, in the industry mm -hmm. and in the market um and so just being informed and and educated is really what I wanted to get out of this um but also I mean real estate in California is pretty gnarly and it's great so yes it is why not go into it? <laughs> I yeah. agree yeah. Um, um, can you tell so us? Siobhan, oh, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, yeah. So Siobhan asked, what is my plan now? Yeah, basically, I, I currently work in the wine and travel industry. Um, so I'm really enjoying that. And um, I am doing that right now full time just because I graduated college a couple years ago. Real estate was something I always thought about but never really went into. Um, honestly, I'm a little bit nervous about going into the real estate industry, not because I don't believe I'll succeed, um, but more of just the, I know that there is uncertainty about your pay, how st stable that can be. Um, so having my, uh, current position is what I'm kind of leaning towards right now. And honestly, I don't want to go into a brokerage or work with someone and I'm only going in for the sake of going in. I want to go with someone that I trust, that I believe in. And I think that takes a little bit of time for me to network with people. Um, I know a lot of people in the industry um, and they say that they are agents, but I, I want them to introduce me to their brokerage. And so I can learn with them and one-on-one -on -one for sure. Uh, but I don't want to go in just to go in. I want to really kind of feel everything that's around there. Uh, but you know what? I passed my exam last week and there's something, maybe they like can tap into your phone or something like that because I've gotten calls from a bunch of different brokerages in the area. Um, I live in San Diego, in the San Diego area. And they're just like, are you interested in learning about our brokerage? Are you inter interested in joining us? So j it's not like the other job market where you're not going to be, where you have to throw out resumes and feelers and this and that. I mean, people want you there. People want you to be part of their team. Um, and it, 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 that's, that's a confidence boost, I think. Um, but also just being aware that like, you know, what's best for you, you know, what you want to do with real estate and making sure that that brokerage aligns with that. Also, when you pass the state exam, um, your, your, um, your information is completely public. So what happens is, uh, mm. brokers can reach, can, can go and tap into all the new licensed agents and then reach out to you. They're, they're trying to grasp you before somebody else does. So, mm -hmm. um, it's always a good idea because then your your address is also public record as well. So if you want to do like a PO box or something along those lines, once you've passed the state exam, that way whatever address you have is public record. So you'll if even if you don't get an onslaught of phone calls, you're going to get an onslaught of mail. Um, but mm -hmm. um, you know, hopefully by then you guys will have picked. But so you're still looking. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I I I I'm still looking just because I want to make sure I'm going with the right person and and I'm like just get seeing all my options out there. Um, Teller Williams, I mean, that just pops up because I see them everywhere um, in California. Um, and Kathy was just really insightful. And she's like, 
if you want to go that route, they've got their benefits. They've got what's good for you. Like, if you want to go that way, there's that way. But you can also go the boutique route. Or if you want to go like luxury, um, high-end homes, there's another route for that. And she was mentioning Rodeo Realty, I think it was. Um, anyways, th that person was in my class, whoever introduced her to Anyways, not the point. Um, but there's just so many options out there. And there's not one right answer, I think. I, I, I don't know. I would assume that as like you can go into one and then if it doesn't work out, you can go somewhere else. Um, but it's nice to know that there's a, a lot of options. Um, Violetta asks, how long did you have to wait for your exam when you started looking to book your exam appointment? Some say, say they are booked four to five weeks out. Um, okay. Ooh. So weeks out I think that might have been the case a couple of months ago so I finished my exam or my last book excuse me with, with Kathy uh, real estate law right before Thanksgiving and then Thanksgiving happened I, I passed both all three books and then I Thanksgiving happened my brain was fried I didn't even want to look at a zoom for the rest of my life um, and then I actually took a break and I know some people would be like, well, no, you should have taken the exam as soon as you finished and, 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 you know, while it's fresh. But honestly, for me personally, when my brain is fried and I can't focus on anything anymore, I, I, I tend to overthink my questions. I tend to overthink my answers. Having that nice break, I think will be beneficial. At least for me, it was. Um, I believe I submitted my application in... January. I waited until the beginning of 2023 to do that. I did my live scan. I applied for the license, sorry, for the exam and the licensing. So I did both. I did the combo, which was about $350. Does that sound about right, Kathy? Yeah. That's about it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's three And then the live sure. scan. Yeah. And then the live scan was, a, it was a, for me about another $80, I think is what I was telling Kathy. Um, so submitting all the information, making sure I had it all, the application, that was the beginning of January. I didn't get my approval for the, for my application until believe it was mid April was when I got approved. Like my application went through and then I could set my appointment. And I set my appointment for May 9th. So maybe about two or three weeks later, I set my appointment after I got approved. Um, so it took between January, Mar uh, January, February, March, I'm mean, almost three months it took to get through all of that. I mean, that included like me taking the time to go through and write the application and fill it all in. Sometimes I went back and forth because I was like, I don't know if I'm like, do I remember my social security? I don't remember that. So <laughs> I had to go back and forth a lot, but really uh, you could expect anywhere from, I think eight to 10 weeks now. It, 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 it's taking a little bit of time. The cool thing is that once you submit your application on e-licensing, if you're doing it online through e-licensing, they have this little portal that tells you like, if you submitted your application on this date, this is the app, this is your expected approval date or they say we're we're looking at applications that were submitted between this date and this date so that gives you a little bit of an idea sometimes they would take a little bit longer than others like i think around january 19th maybe because it was or like martin luther king day maybe they took a little bit extra time and then i think in february like president's day and all those other holidays they took a little bit of extra time as well um but yeah i would say eight to ten weeks now um violetta also asked how long did the exam take you I have anxiety, so I took the whole three hours, but I'll be honest with you, 150 questions and I finished in an hour and a half. The rest of the time, I went to review all of my questions and I was able to finish the exam and review my questions in those three hours. Some people just did the 150 and dashed out of there. They did, they, they did not even look back. They were probably like, I just wanna get it done and over with. Um, but like I said, I have anxiety. So I, I I wanted to make sure that I at least answered every question and I read the question correctly. Um, sometimes you read the question, like I said, those negatory questions, those ones that say blah, 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 except those are the ones that really caught me because I had to second guess myself. Okay, wait, three of these answers match that terminology. This one doesn't. Let's make sure I actually click the right one. Um, 
Yeah, but it took me an hour and a half to finish, but then I went back in and redid it. And I wanted to give myself the allotted three hours just because they're giving you that time. I figure you might as well use it. Um, I, I took the day off anyways from work. So I was like, okay, if I, if I fail, then I can cry in my bedroom and not talk about it with anybody. Or if I pass, then I can celebrate with everybody. So. <laughs> Do you um, have like a Shimon? set of, uh, oh, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Sorry, I have another um, yeah. from Siobhan. Can you post your most helpful study tools? Um, like happiness, and I was kind of joking, but I kind of wasn't. I, I was very fortunate to have Kathy as my instructor. And so I was listening to her class every, uh, every Saturday, Sunday from 9 to 3 p.m. And because she has so much life experience, sometimes the terminology just doesn't cut it. When you actually apply it into real life situations, it actually clicks. So for me, just actually paying attention in this class was super helpful, um, but also the Quizlets. I mean, I used it in college when I, was, uh, when I was studying for exams, and that's how I learned to train myself to study was Quizlets um, the I have a resource. Um, I will send it to Kathy so she can give it to you guys. It's simulated exams, but they're they're like paper PDFs. Um, but those are like scenario questions. All 150 questions are nearly a scenario question. So um, I think that's super helpful. Um, understanding what parts of the questions to break down term and definition. That's those are super helpful. But um, then when you get into the scenarios, that's when you're uh, going to like take a, the, a minute or two minutes to really read through it uh, and not just brush through those. So I will send those over to Kathy as well. I meant to send them over, but there's like five or six of them. And then also another question, like thing that kind of gets me mixed up is the OR and EE mortgager, mortgagee, those ones. I have another set of questions as well, or another set of like exam question exams that go through those in depth as well. So I'll send them over to Kathy. Um, but those were helpful for me. That'd be awesome. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Anything else? Any questions about like the books and like the, the different principles, practice, law? I know that on the exam, they tell you like 17% is this much. I think it was like proper, or I don't even remember. Gosh, um, they, they break down the, there's 150 questions and they're like, there's gonna be like certain percentage of these questions are gonna be focused on transfer of property. And then a certain amount of questions are gonna be this and that. Um, one thing that Kathy will probably already tell you and is ingrained is, um, is uh, how many square feet are in an acre? 43,000, just remember that. Don't even remember the rest of the numbers, just 43. Just remember the 43 and then everything else will fall into place. Uh, <laughs> um, if you're ever nervous about the math scenarios, I think that there, for me, there wasn't as many as I thought there were gonna be, but also like the, the they're not giving you like calculus questions. <laughs> or anything like that yeah the math is pretty straightforward do you recall if you had more than three? Oh, sorry brandy's got her hand up sure well that's okay i'm sorry you may have answered it but maybe i didn't get it um how long did you after you had taken the classes i know you said you took some time off did were you mm -hmm. studying during that time as well or what did your study Nada. habits look like <laughs> just strictly from the classes <laughs> um so i finished my last class with kathy right before thanksgiving and then I took the holidays mm -hmm. off. I didn't even want to think about real estate. Um, it was a lot of information at one time. Um, submit my application until January. Um, I would say even like the, after the holidays, probably like third week of January, that's when I submitted my application. Um, and then once I submitted my application, I was like, oh, shoot, I should probably study now. So that's when I started studying. So between January, February, March, April, and then I took my exam first week of May. It was almost like four and a half months that I studied. Okay. And then, sorry, you said uh, when you did study, you were using those Quizlets. Yeah. Yeah. Quizlets and um, scenario questions. I knew that if I could get the Quizlets, that would be definition 
and term, term and definition. That would be easier for me. Um, but then I have the scenario questions that I'll send to Kathy. And those are the ones that I really, really focused on because I tend to get caught up in the question. And I think, oh, I'm reading the first sentence. It's asking about it's asking about this terminology. And then you read the second sentence, you're like, oh, wait, no, that's not what they were asking. And then you get the third and the fourth. And then you finally get to the bottom and you're like, oh my gosh, I was inundated with so much information. And now they're asking me a question that I don't even remember what I was talking about or what I was thinking about. Um, so the scenario questions, I wanna say like 75% of the exam for me was scenario questions. I don't know how they pick the questions. Of course, I'm not, I don't have a crystal ball, um, but, I'm gonna guess that, like I said, they ha there's so much information and they have to pile it down into 150 questions. The tricky questions are gonna be the negatory questions and the scenario questions. Okay, and you said that uh, you will give uh, Kathy the information to share with us? Yes, yes, absolutely, absolutely. Any information I will that I have, I will send over to you guys. Um, I, the, the podcast for, uh, the podcast from prep agent were super helpful. And I also had another podcast that I followed along. I don't remember the name, but I'll send it over to Kathy as well. Um, they were free. I, I, one thing that I was a little bit confused about, but I think that might be just cause it, it kind of all blends together, but there's, there's talks about, okay, there's the national portion of the exam or there's, and then there's the specific like California um the nice thing is that we're in california so i feel like we're probably one of the most complicated states to work around so once we kind of understand our state laws and our contracts and everywhere else kind of makes more sense and is a little bit you know not as complicated but um when you listen to especially like the the at least for prep agent because i felt like there was a lot more of the national portion you really got that ingrained in you. And then when you get to the contracts and law, then that's when you can focus on California. Um, but I was kind of confused at first. I was like, what's national? What's not? The nice thing is that, like I said, because California is so complicated. <laughs> Once you get us, I think everywhere else is a little bit easier to understand. But that could also just be me thinking that, that California is the best state in the world. I don't know. No, that makes total sense. Um, and that's the thing about prep agent I've been finding too, because we're doing the prep. Um, so on Thursday nights, if I don't have students ask me any questions, we're we're focusing Thursday nights on um, just preparing anyone that's already taken all three classes for the, the state exam. I have the prep agent ebook for um, prepping for that. And I also have the Calibri um, crash course book and I'm just building PowerPoints and I'm gonna put all that back in chat again um, so that you guys have that available to you. And I, I have the Google Drive for Elisa's Quizlets. I've got a Google Drive for, oh, sorry, I see that there's somebody that's trying to get in. Um, so, and the th the reason I keep them as Google Drives isn't because I don't want to just send you guys PDFs, but my thing is the moment you have that link, the link is there permanently unless Google goes under. And if it does, then I'll just move my stuff to whoever the next big company is. That Bing. Gives yeah. Oh, Bing. <laughs> Bing is going to be around. It's been it's been flailing for how many years? Like twenty. So it's eventually going to make it in. But um, anyway, all that being said, the information is at your fingertips whether you're in class with me ever again or not. And I think that um, I must have sold it pretty heavy with Elisa because if Elisa took the classes with me in November and didn't take the state exam until last week and literally calls me, that lets you know that I, I'm serious about being with you guys throughout this whole entire thing it's not just a we're in class together hey sucks to be you the class is over I don't have time for you anymore there's enough instructors and enough people in the industry that like that and I don't want to have that I want us to build a community that um that communicates with each other and bonds and then that way you know there's good agents in other parts of California so if you can't sell a house in another part of California you know there is an agent in that part of California based on rapport and communication that will help out that family member or whatever. Now, I'm not saying you can't sell all, you can sell all over California. You can go to Alabama, Arkansas, Ohio. You can get your license anywhere else you want to too. But I just, um, you're not going to have a support system in this industry. And let me, let me be nicer than that. I want <laughs> you to find, you know, I want you to find a broker that will 
help you build your community. But the reality of the situation is we're fighting against uh, the jerk brother in um, Step Brothers, right? Because he was a jerk. He was a real estate agent and a jerk, right? We're fighting against what people know from the industry crashing in 2008. There's still lots of people lost their homes and people are still blaming agents that are new agents right now. Some people weren't even born when that happened. You know what I mean? Like, and, or they're just have, or they're have, they're getting married now, but they were a teenager or they were um, in ele elementary school or something when that happened. So they're identifying it based on the fact that their family lost homes. So they have a bad taste in their mouth. I want us as agents, cause I'm speaking the into existence, everything that in the future, into the present, you're all licensed agents. As far as I'm concerned, I'm going to continue to say that to you. I'm going to continue to say, okay, so you have test anxiety. Okay, cool. So own it, take five minutes and own the <laughs> fact that you have anxiety and be prepared. And look, Elisa's sharing with you. Look, I mean, share. Okay. Do me, <laughs> do me a huge favor. Um, give, can you give us a rundown on, on, um, what it is that you studied? And then when you took the exam, you're like, oh man, I focused so heavily in this area. And that wasn't even something I did. Or do you, is that something you could put together? Yes. Okay. Um, okay. You know, what's funny. I was take okay. I, the time I finished my exam in an hour and a half and I was like, okay, I'm going to spend the next half of the time to go through my answers. And actually what I wrote was like all of the questions that I was kind of iffy about the ones that I could go back to like number 21 couldn't get that let me go back to it and let's try to break it down the questions um but the nice thing is that everything that I studied the exam the bad thing was that there was a lot of information so it's really hard to fit a bunch of stuff into your brain um so one thing that I think was really stand out was as an agent, what are your responsibilities to your client, your fiduciary, fiduciary, whatever duty to your client? I That was a huge, huge part of the exam, because as much as we are professionals and we should be we, we know what we're supposed to be doing, there are people that don't know what they're doing. And so it's really ingraining what we have the responsibility to be doing. Um, but also that if you, I mean, I don't know if Kathy, Kathy ever brought it up to your guys' class, but she was always like, if you don't know the answer, go to your broker. If you don't know what's going on, go to your broker because they will also be able to help you. And that was a large part of that exam as well was that, yes, you know, you are the, um, you were the point of contact for that client, but your broker is also there to help you in a lot of certain uh, instances and cases. Um, so whatever that was, law, agency law or whatever they, they termed that part of the exam was a, a huge part of, at least for me, what I what stuck out. Um, the Another thing that stuck out to me was, um, I was surprised not so much about um, contracts, which is fine. And actually financing wasn't a huge part on my exam, but um, maybe Kathy brought it up to you guys as well. Anything about um, federal housing, um, 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 no, what am I thinking of? Brain blast, come on guys. Um, I don't remember. Um, oh, 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 anything about discrimination. That's what it was. Anything about that, you got to know it like the back of your hand. I think all of us are ethical people and we know what's right. We know what's wrong. We know that we're not going to be meanies out there. Um, but I, they, they put it in the law for good reason. So focusing on that as well, I think. Um, not a lot of math, not a lot of like you're not you're not doing like percentages or anything like that, um, which was really helpful. But uh, how many feet are in an acre? Forty three thousand something, something, something. That's what you're gonna remember. <laughs> um, that you say that. Uh, that I say that because when I got to my desk, when I was taking the exam, they give you a pen and paper, and the first thing that I wrote was forty three thousand. And I hope that the, if the question came on the exam, that I would have the answer written down. Um, but yeah, agency law um, disclosures. That was another one that I I I remember because even though they didn't have a lot about contracts specifically like what each line item is or anything like that is just transfer disclosure statement that was a huge one making sure that that gets um if you oh if you um if 
a lot of the scenario questions were about that. The no, the broker notices that this house has a leak. The seller says to not mention that there's a leak in the house, sort of situations like that. Um, but yeah, sorry, I like don't remember the question anymore. <laughs> no, it's okay. So, so basically consumer driven. So anything that would have anything to do with discrimination, we can't discriminate, final answer. And then disclosure. So um, the agency disclosure and the is always the first and foremost disclosure. And we really kind of hounded um, in the class a few times after that. But um, yeah, so no, I mean, does anyone else have any, we now don't get me wrong, we can, we can stay, but I, I want to um, make sure that you guys have also. An so I have a question. Yeah. Um, where did you take your exam? Since you're from San Diego uh, area, did you end up going to La Palma or there's a different one towards your area? I went to, if, uh, if anyone's familiar with San Diego, um, there's, a, it's near Claremont. You probably don't know where that is. Anyways, um, I didn't go downtown San Diego. There, it, it was kind of central San Diego. It was between a bunch of different freeways. Um, so if you're uh -huh. familiar with San Diego, it was in Claremont, Kearney Mesa area. Mm -hmm. I know okay. that, um, I'm not sure how different it is walking into the exam. If you don't mind, mm -hmm. I would like to like, when I walked into the exam, I knew that the exam was gonna be three hours. So I had my parents uh -huh. drop me off. Because like oh. I was telling Kathy, like if I pass the exam, I don't want to drive super excited and get into a car accident. Or if I fail, I don't want to cry and then get into a car accident. So I wanted to have, I had my parents drop me off at the um, test, uh, the testing center. Um, they don't allow you to bring anything with you. You can bring a bag, but then they put, have you put it in lockers or they have you then put uh, away in another separate room. And then you, you can only bring your government issued ID and that was it you couldn't bring anything else with you to the actual desk um the debt of uh, the exam is online or it's on a computer um so it, there's no typing or anything like that it's just a mouse clicking click 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 um and they the once you start the exam there's like a timer forget mm -hmm. about the timer because that mm -hmm. can get, at least for me, it, it drove my anxiety out of the roof. I was like, oh my gosh, I've got two hours and 59 minutes left. Here we go. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> I, I just take your time taking the exam. Uh, for my exam, there was a left sidebar that you could go back and forth between questions. So they gave me a piece of paper and I wrote the question that I didn't know the answer to. Question 27, okay, I'll get back to that one. Question whatever, and I'll go back to that. So then when I finished all 150 questions, I went back and reviewed the ones that I didn't remember. Um, the, they provide you paper, pen, and a calculator in case there is math involved. Um, and once the three hours are done, they completely shut off your computer and then you, you, you get your results right then and there. I mean, I think I waited five minutes, but. <laughs> did you, um, did they, okay. So Mark told us that when he took the exam, they folded the paper, they handed it to him and said, please wait until you get in the car. Is that what they did to you? Yes. And like, so so Mark, okay. 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 So share with them how that experience. So they shut. So basically you were there the three hours. You're like, hell or high water. I already answered them, but I'm going to make sure I answered them. Right. So you stuck it out and then it shut it down. And then you stood in line, I guess, with everybody else that was still there with you. And they, so share with us, please. I apologize. Oh my gosh. Oh, so much anxiety. Goodness gracious. Um, Finish the exam. Actually, okay, actually, I want to preface also. Everyone walked in at different times. That uh, So your my test time was 8.30, but because I got checked in earlier, I could start my exam at, as soon as I sat at my desk. And I happened to sit at my desk at 8.25 or something like that, 8.27. So then the three hours starts when you click the button on the computer that says start exam. So even though I my exam time was 8 30 my three hours were up at 11 27 or whatever it was um 
So even if you walk in later than other people, you're still going to get three hours. It doesn't really matter who walks in first or who walks in last because they time you based on when you click on the computer when you start. So do not feel like if someone leaves earlier than you that they are a genius and they pass the exam and, and they did it faster and you're not smart enough because you couldn't answer the question fast enough. It's not that that's not the case at all. Re, uh, everyone's going at their own pace. Um, like I said, some people took an hour and they just breezed through it. And then I took the time and, and, and gave myself the three hours. Um, but for me, yeah, everyone came in at different times. Everyone left at different times. The majority of us did stay actually. Uh, the majority of us did stay for the whole three hours and took the, the test. Um, once the computer shuts down, it just says like your exam is over. I like actually sat back and I like breathed for like five seconds because I was like, I can't believe I just took a three hour exam and I may or may not, this may or may not be the end of my life, who knows? Um, so <laughs> I got up, walked out and they, they, they asked for your ID again because they wanna make sure that they print the right <laughs> results for the right people, I'm assuming. Um, I might have the paper still, but it's, it's two pieces of paper. The first sheet of paper is um, what it gives you um, some instructions on if you pass the exam, this is what's going to happen next. Next, if you don't pass the exam, this is what you can do. And then the back, the second sheet of that was your results. Um, but they folded it up so you can't see anything. And uh, oh gosh, it was so much anxiety. And they say you cannot open this until you get out of the building. Um, and ours was like a huge, like multi-story building. So I walked outside. No, actually, I went to the bathroom. So I waited until <laughs> I wasn't in the floor level. I was on the first, like, I, I went to the lobby and I went to the bathroom and I was like, okay, I can, I can go to the bathroom. And if I fail, I can cry and, and no one will see me or whatever it is. Anyways, I opened it up in the bathroom and I didn't, I saw the first page and I was like, oh no, I must have failed because they highlighted the part that says, if you, if you fail, this is what you should do next. But then I flipped over to the second page and I just word, read the word congratulations. And that's when I started crying. <laughs> so I still cried anyways. <laughs> Good tears are always better. Good tears are always better. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I didn't even read the rest of the, the letter because it just said congratulations. So I was stoked about it. Um, but yeah, it was, I, you do get your results that same day. I think I read somewhere that they sometimes could like some test places don't give your results right away, but I don't know, but for me in San Diego, that wasn't the case. I so. think that, I think that's the old school way of doing it. But, um, but Mark was sharing when he last, when we had him in that they handed him the paper and said, please don't open it until you get to the car. And so in the elevator, the guy in the car with it, or the, sorry, the guy in the elevator with him was like, so, is, you know, is something like, this is like my third time. And Mark's like, oh no, he didn't like know how to respond to the guys like, oh, or whatever. Oh. And Mark was like, oh God, please let this not be my, this let, let, let me not have to come back. <laughs> but like knowing that this guy in the elevator is like, don't worry if you didn't pass this my third time or whatever. And, and Mark got in the car and saw that he passed. He was like, oh my gosh. So anyway, but um, cool, cool, cool. Okay. Um, so you did the quit. I just want to re re review. You did the quizlets. You, you reviewed basically like the consumer driven or the, the national, if, if they're qu national questions, that means they're the federal questions and Correct. then you've got the state. So, and you know, we've said this in class previously, or for those of you that have even seen some of my instructions, some of my hyper focus is the state of California is far harder on us as citizen or as residents than, um, than, than the federal government. But that has to do with the fact that the federal government can't be that far reaching into the state. The state has to regulate it. So push comes to shove, the state of California is not gonna let you do it. And the federal government would love to not let us do things, but they can't because they aren't allowed to reach that far into the state because they don't have that control. So that's um, just in case for those of you that are like, wait a minute, we didn't do any national studying. But so Elise is talking about you the, did, federal, the federal. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you did. Yeah, exactly. that's what I'm trying to say. I'm like, so I might not have said it like that and I should have, but I'm getting better at this job. It's only been, you know, 22 <laughs> years. Eventually I'm gonna be a professional. But um, anyway, so does anyone else have any questions? Because, you know, we, 45 minutes is 45 minutes. So I want to make sure that we, um, 
that we take care of your needs, whatever your worries or fears are, present them. Cause if you're sharing yeah. somebody else in the class might want to share, doesn't have the, um, have the strength to do it. Oh, another thing. Um, Elisa's willing to come back in. Oh, we got something. Um, oh, it says, th congratulations. Oh. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> Um, but I put into chat all of the, all of the different, um, the Google drives on purpose. If you guys need that information, I, I, I send stuff to students almost every day, if not every other day that I've already sent them. And I don't mean to be rude when I say that I'm not, I don't mean it like, oh man, I already sent it to you. I was the student that was always asking for information to be resent to me. Cause there were so many other things coming at me. So don't hesitate to ask for something you've already asked for from me. I, that's not going to affect me in any way, shape, or form. If you're asking, that means it's a, it's a need. And um, my mom would say, don't be lazy. I, you can be lazy. I, I emotionally, more than a, a, like 15 emails, I have to take a break. Like that is a lot of information that I'm trying to parse, trying to parse and have, you know, teach at three different schools and do live lecturing and help with independent study and then Zoom and e-licensing. We did an e-licensing, then I did a tutor session last night. Like I was on Zoom until 1030 last night. So I, I'm telling you, I will set the time aside that works best for you. But um, thank you so much, Elisa. Elisa, it's I L L Y S S A, but I I always want to say Elisa, but it's Elisa, and she, yeah. you're going to Europe, and then you'll yes. be back. Yes, and she's more than willing to come back in and answer any questions if you guys want her to come in again, uh, because she's yeah. the most recent student I have that just that just took the exam and passed it. So for those of you that are like, oh, I should have asked this or whatever send the questions and she's yes. going to send us information that worked for her. She's not going to send us the stuff that didn't. That's why she did the Quizlet. She, yes. she knows what works for her. So um, I thought it would be awesome to have her in. Does anyone else, else have any other questions? You can always put in the chat if you don't want to say anything. Yes, absolutely. Oh, I wanted to mention that the uh, application, um, it's, you can, I believe you can start an application and go back to it um but we i did it online i know you can submit them in person but if i had to i would all recommend everybody do it online register for the e-licensing um and uh even though the state exam you could just take the state exam i'm going to assume like 99 percent of you want to continue this full time and and or go into it as a career then do the combo do the the uh, exam plus the licensing. Cause then I got this cute little card in the mail. It's like my little like pocket license, yeah. which is really cute. <laughs> it's like, it looks like a credit card, but it doesn't have like a, it doesn't, it doesn't, it's not a credit card, but it, it literally is your, your, um your department of real estate. Um, Can we see it? Right. Or is it too risky, yeah. like, too much Heck information? Yeah. Oh, oh no, okay. it's public. No. Everything on them, everything on it's public. So, as as oh, long okay. as you're okay with it. So yeah. Yeah. Um, Oh my gosh, I was stoked about it because like, <laughs> actually they don't, they don't print. I, okay, you know, when you like, you get a diploma, they print it out for you and they mail it to you. So they like, I guess for the DRE, they don't print your license, like a paper license. So I went to like a really nice printer and I got it printed out in color because I'm just really proud of myself. Yeah. Um, but, and, th and then I got the, in the mail when I got my little pocket license, I was like, this is like, you go, okay. okay. You know what I'm going to do? This is going to sound like way, too, like way too much. But you know, when you're going to like a bar and you have to like pull out your ID or whatever, I should be like, oh, sorry. That's just my real estate license. So sorry about that. <laughs> Let me just take that back. <laughs> oh, you work in real estate? Yeah, yes, I do work in real estate. Thank you so much. Um, but anyways, can you see it? No, you probably can't see it. Put, just can put you your hand. Yeah. yeah, yeah. State of California. Yeah, you have to act like it's a, a makeup tutorial. Let's put your hand on the back. I, <laughs> just I am a YouTuber now, guys. Thank you so much. <laughs> oh, there you are. Let's see. Wait, I have to. Oh, that looks really nice. I mean, well, yeah. congratulations. Thanks. It's cool. It's got like a little gold stripe on it. Um, but yeah, it has your ID number on here. It has your name. Um, the type of license that you have. So mine is salesperson. Um, I'm not a broker um not yet but not yet anyways actually I was, I was just thinking about that I was like dang like I have my license maybe I'll just stick with that but I mean I think if I've already done the education and I've done the prerequisites I mean it would be so awesome to just keep moving forward and um, I was telling Kathy as well that I want to get my notary license and she sent me some information about that um so the the cool thing about real estate is that you you don't have to sell homes you can go into a variety of different 
positions and occupations. And I was actually, okay, I'm obsessed with fast food. Like I love Jack in the Box and I love In-N-Out. And I was thinking like, maybe I should apply for a job at Jack in the Box because their headquarters are in San Diego. And I should just do like, because the Jack, Jack in the Box is always trying to find land for their fast food Absolutely. restaurant. And like, um, imagine how many 99 cent tacos I could have if I worked for Jack in the Box. So I was I'm just so thinking, dead. Like, That's hilarious. I, <laughs> but like the, I don't have to sell homes. I don't have to sell large commercial buildings. I could work for a larger corporation, have my license, and I would be that go-to gal for their next office or their next building or whatever property that they're looking into. Um, that was yes, location scouting. That's right, exactly. I was like that. I thought that would be cool, and especially because I love fast food. So I think it'd be an awesome opportunity for me. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Um, so that you guys know now that, um, Elisa's passed her seat exam, her information's public. You can look her up on the department of real estate. So if she were to talk to someone and go, Hey, I, um, I would love to help you find their house. You can, uh, consumers can actually go on to the department of real estate and look up her name. They're going to see her license. They're going to see when she received it. It's going to have the date that she received uh, when she passed it. And then it'll also show the address that she has, um, that license she has on her little business card. What happens is as soon as she chooses a broker, they're going to send the certificate with the broker's mm -hmm. information to the broker because the it's one of the questions, maybe not on the state exam, but it is in the books that um, all of the certificates, all the Department of Real Estate proving that yes. they are your licensed agent have to be framed on the wall at the broker's main location. So they, you, we can get one of those in the mail as well, but like the card is the bomb and we don't like, and don't get me wrong. You can, you can pull in Elisa and go and get Kinko's and get the hookup and get the pretty light that there's nothing wrong with that. No, no shame in that game. I love it. But, um, but the re but, uh, back in the day when I first started, we had, we had get a certificate. We didn't get the cards initially. We'd get a certificate in the mail. We had to hand that to the broker when we became, uh, when we decided to choose that broker, it was all snail mail. It had to be sent through the United States Postal Service. And then they would have to put, um, they could white out. That's the only thing. That's the only piece of paper you can white out. They could white out my address and write in there. Um, the broker's address. And then because they sent the paperwork up to the Department of Real Estate, the Department of Real Estate would send a certificate with my name on it with the accurate address that would replace it. Now, if the Department of Real Estate, this is me deep diving, just hear me out, goes to the office and sees that people back in the day saw that there was a whiteout um, and a written in, they would ask to see the employment file to see if the broker had applied for um, an updated version of that that license or that certificate. So I'm telling you, there's there some of this old process. That's why the website sucks. So because they still are doing things. It's very he it's it's heavily paper driven. No matter where you are in the industry, it's heavily paper driven. So that's what I was gonna say. But um, Any let's questions see about the application yeah. or anything yeah. like that. I know that the application was really daunting for me because I like it felt like okay. I just finished this. What now? It feels like that always now. I feel like, oh, what now? What now? What now? Um, but any questions about the, like, how to get into, like, where, like how to drive? Oh, I guess you're like, we're all from different parts of California. So I guess. No, that's no, okay. Like, that. Well, but, we did, um, I did an e-licensing Zoom um, teach it going from, um, starting the process with the, yeah. so cause I have an old account. So, um, we used Adam's information and we create an account. So I, we have that. Um, so we have instructions for anyone, but oh, good. is there anyone in here that has questions? Because she's, you know, Elisa's here. I'm to the bomb diggity. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> I guess not Any questions about certain terms. I mean, there's, I know there's a lot of information, so it's probably like what's on the exam, what's not on the exam, hard to say, but if not like write down your questions, send them to Kathy and I'm more than happy to come back on and answer them one by one again. Um, this was fun. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. We, I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it because you've, you're so encouraging. Oh, I love it. Motivational okay. speaker. I should add that yes. to my resume. Yes, maybe you add it to your resume. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it is seven twenty-three. It looks like. Oh, thank you for sharing. With us. Oh, good, good, good. Absolutely. All right, Elisa. Thank you so much. We'll have a wonderful time in Europe, and we will definitely um, have a celebratory. Yes, it's being recorded. And oh, sorry, I um somebody is excited. 
um say hey, okay like, class is over <laughs> she's like oh does that mean we get to go for a w yeah we're gonna go do yeah. all things um well, yep <laughs> don't don't feel bad if you missed most of the oh sorry go ahead it's okay so she's like ran into my arm trying to jump up um i can we, come back we, again guys yes absolutely <laughs> and um as time progresses yes absolutely congrats lady awesome thank you guys thank yes. you guys so much of course, absolutely. Be encouraged. If you need um, anything, I'm an email away. Alisa is going to be out of um, out of the country, but she's going to come back. And she, I'm telling you, she did the Quizlets to help you guys out. She has the uh, quiz, not just the Quizlets for the principles practice and um, legal aspects. We just added, we mixed principles and legal aspects together to complete the Quizlets for the legal aspects thing. But she also did all of the 754 vocabulary terms on the Department of Real Estate yes. website. So in her Quizlet. So seriously, the, the tools are there to help you. And if you need other tools, Thursdays when we don't have Elisa coming in, which we won't at least for a month, um, we're going to be doing the prep, um, the prep agent and the Calibri crash course outlines. And I'm breaking those down. And then you can ask any questions you want for those as well. So whatever we can do to help you pass the state exam, that's what these classes are all about. Okay. Yes, awesome. Thank you guys. Thank you for having me. I appreciate Thank you. it. Uh, where can we see the recordings? That's a really good question. It's um it's on my YouTube page. So let me let me put that in chat. Bubba, you're gonna have to go over there. I love you, but mama mia. Um, okay. <laughs> she her, her name isn't even Bubba. I can't, you know, it's just one of those things. So this is my um this is my YouTube, and then we also have uh we actually do live. Um, so right now we're actually live streaming on Twitch because some students don't, uh, some people don't do the, um, the YouTubes and it's on Twitch right now and it will be every Thursday. So if you guys want to listen to Twitch, um, while you're driving home from work or whatever you're doing, you can also do that. Um, oh, what does it say? I dedicated dear mom by, by Tupac to you. Oh, Awesome. Okay. Awesome, so guys. yes. Okay. Be blessed. Be encouraged. If you need me, I'm an email away. I'm a phone call away. I'm a, all the things away. And Elisa, again, God bless you. You are wonderful. Um, um, yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Well, awesome, okay. guys. we will, we will see you all once again. Talk to you soon. Bye. 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 Bye.